kind of getting busy on the motor here again. My memory is a little bit rusty in where I left off, so I'm going to have to go through a lot of this again. <clears throat> Trying to find my parts is the biggest challenge. Um, I can't find the fittings for this Edelbrock water pump that it came with. This one here actually came with my cheap Chinese PCB catch can, which I think it's the right thread, but man, it it uh, fits rather loose. Um, and these are ORB fittings. They have a O-ring that goes on, and I believe looking at these, they probably need a crush sleeve or crush ring or whatever so <clears throat> I ordered some stuff for that um, I'm gonna have to see if I can order crush rings because I don't trust the threads on this it just seems too loose and I, I need that for the catch can after I adapt it to this <laughs> um, so that's one problem. Uh, I remember them being very small. Like I think they're a three ace barb or something like that. So how the hell do you go from a three ace here right to that? <laughs> and that looks to be, I don't know, three quarter inch, maybe bigger. So. I'm ordering a new one of these. I actually had this laying around because I wanted to put a 302 in this temporarily to rebuild the Cleveland. And that has kind of a fitting poking up like that. So I'm like, oh, that'll work. So that's coming off. Putting on a standard one, which will be better anyways because I got to come out into the right. And I won't have a fan. So I put the new fuel pump on. What was that? A Carter, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> and I went to go put the oil pressure sending unit on. Took that off of the, the Pinto engine here. I originally had... Uh, one of them cheap plastic line ones to heat into here. And this is just for the idiot light. Um, so I'm going to put that back on just so the idiot light and the dash works again. Uh, but then I bought an electronic one. And that just threaded right into this Mercruiser part. Just a tube. Which already has a T in it. But now that's a small thread that worked with the worked with the new sensor. So I gotta find an adapter to bring that down. I threaded this one in the top here, thinking it was gonna stick out more, even with the wire plugged in. Um, but now when I put an adapter in here, that's gonna stick out quite a bit too. That'll be great. Should be fine though. So, another Menards trip to get that done. Um, so on, the, on this fuel pump, I see it's got a flare fitting for the pressure side. Um, it kind of looks like quarter inch. So with this whole no rubber fuel line rule, I can only have 12 inches total. I kind of want to have no rubber line <laughs> if I can help it. Yeah, put this somewhere. So I'm looking at this banjo fitting. Um, this thing is pretty nasty. I don't know. It might need a rebuild. I bought it on eBay a long time ago. It says $650. Um, 
This has a 750 Edelbrock, and I know that works, but I know that's too much for this. Hang on, we're going to look at it, though. All right, so I got the air cleaner off. Getting kind of dirty, but uh, it's a 750 Edelbrock. I don't know if they all do that, but this one says Weber on the side. Um, but yeah, this one looks like it has a barb fitting on it. <clears throat> I'm going to look and see if I can get something with the inverted flare. So I can just bend up a piece of tubing. You can see this one has, I don't know if that was stock or how that's supposed to route, but I don't think it's supposed to route near the fan like that. So I haven't done a lot to this car since I've owned it. It's been some years now. I put a new clutch in it, um, new wheels. Put an aftermarket grill in. Broke that already. Um, but yeah, it's it just runs. It's old and tired. That'll be future future me problems. Anyways, back to the task at hand here. Um, I'm gonna see if I can order a hard line for that. Or, I mean, a, a fitting to put a hard line on. So, uh, I'm sure I'll have to have a rubber line from there to the frame. Um, I tend to think of it. There's no, there's no return line on this. I think Pinto has a return line. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, this goes up to the carb. Right here. Huh. So I don't need a return line. That'll be nice. One less frickin' tube to bend. Getting good news all over the place today. Well, uh, what else to think about? This is going to stay on for a while, just as a mock-up. I'm not going to put my nice black, um, what was that, PA Performance Alternator on there yet. I ordered the fittings. I got, I believe this is a metric. 16 by 16 millimeters by one and a half. I bought stainless adapters to adapt to half inch NPT, normal everyday Joe Blow thread, and a 5A barb for that. I believe the plain old thing has a 5 ace because I ordered a 5 ace hose that's supposed to be a replica of a Ford part to put there so then I got the same adapter here half inch NPT but I got a 5 ace barb for that and when I look up I'm trying to design this engine for early 60s Mustang that's what this bracket is. The water pump is supposed to fit on there. Um, dipstick. So apparently, back in the day, they ran the heater hose to here with like a 90 degree fitting. I got one of those, but this is like way bigger hole than they did back then. It's actually like this size. But I did find one that'll fit in there. And they ran the hoses under the carburetor. Along, along the uh, valve cover and on a Pinto the hoses come out right about in that area so I think that'll work fine. Throw out the two hoses under here, one will go here, god my camera skills are lacking, and one goes here with the 
I think the new one has their one there, but I have to plug that. Uh, so yeah, I know I have to torque the intake manifold bolts yet. I gotta torque the water pump bolts and I gotta flip around and pull the rear main cap off because I know I didn't put any assembly lube on that when I put it back together and that has to be torqued. Um, what else? I never bought a starter. This starter was off of my first pickup truck. <laughs> And it had a rusted cap on there, and I like silicone a piece of aluminum on there. That might be going on here. <laughs> it's probably a big mistake because it'll probably be horrible to replace that starter. But <sighs> it's there, and I don't have the money to buy a new one, so. Um, what else? Oh, I gotta put the flywheel on. That'll be last after I get it off the stand. So I got a question about the flywheel. I bought, I bought a McLeod aluminum flywheel. And you put your own weight on there. It comes with two weights, so this needs a 28 ounce weight because it's a, 1972 block um, but the bolt pattern I don't believe is clocked and normally there's like a double pin hole there's never a double pin in it but you just line up the hole and that flywheel doesn't have a hole for that so how do you know where where that's supposed to go I do have the original clutch and the flywheel for this laying around. I'll have to dig that out and <clears throat> kind of uh, see where that mass is on there and see if I can figure that out. <sighs> I don't know why I'm saving that, but <laughs> it's pretty burnt out. But if it helps me through this, it was good a good save. Um, what else? I'm worried about this manifold. This big honk crap on the side here. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to make it. That's a 1978 Mustang II manifold. The earlier ones had a big horn that came down. And if I need that, it might be too late. I didn't want that big horn. There was like some kind of like valve that was in the exhaust, like a Jake brake valve that did something about warm up or something. I don't. So it's 70s smog stuff. I don't get it. So I'm looking at this. That's some kind of flange fitting. I don't know if they want the PCV in that. Not sure where the PCV is supposed to go. Uh, I don't know. It's so different. Um, this being a boat motor, I, I couldn't really compare a lot. Let's see what this thing does. PCV. This, oh, it's on the front. Uh. Oh yeah, there's a PCB valve. Huh. Well, I guess we'll do that. We'll put it out the back. All right, well, I picked up a piece of 5 sixteenths flared tubing. Um, I'm going to try to Bend up a fuel line to go from here, up around to here. I got, uh, I believe, a summit cart with a 
fuel line that'll replace this banjo fitting. Come down underneath this uh, with a spot for fuel pressure gauge and then the uh, 3AS NPT fitting. Um, it's probably going to interfere with my idea of going with the 60s Mustang heater hose routing. Um, but we'll see. I think the air cleaner I bought, it's going to be beneficial to have that come out underneath here because it's a pretty tight air filter. And I don't have to run the heater hose through there. I can come out to the side, I guess. Not that picky. But anyway, from what I've seen, the old Mustangs, they kind of came up around here. I can't remember if it was up around this side. The radiator hose, that can't be. That's too much stuff going on there. I think I'm going to come up around here. I should probably have that distributor in there to figure out where I got to go. But I think if I stay close to in here, um, coil, ignition coil, don't know where I'm going to put that. I think the Mercruiser had it up in here somewhere. That's another question. I don't know if I can run a stock coil or do I have to use a MSD Blaster 2 coil with the ready to run distributor. I don't know. I think we're going to try a stock coil. Um, we'll go here. Oops. I don't know where I got that one from. I don't recognize that mount. Huh. Let me set that there for now. This one I think is a pinto coil. They're actually both the same. But I've seen them mounted here. That uh, I don't know. I don't. I'm not a fan of that. Or here. That also interferes with what I got going on. Probably gonna have to be here, and I don't have that mount. Hmm. I don't quite get how this one worked. If that was supposed to be like for these head bolts that line up, no, that don't line up. Where the hell would that go? Can't remember if that was off to Cleveland. What do I got on this one? Oh, that's up there. Oh. Yeah, so that one the heater hoses run off to the fender. Which makes sense because uh, they're offset like that. I wonder if I could tuck one right here. Do not have anything else going on there? Dipstick's out of the way. This heater hose could come out around it. This one should terminate here. I 
I have another bracket somewhere. I'm going to go find that. All right, well, I didn't find the one that, that I picked out of the junkyard. It's probably next to my fittings that I lost. But I did find the one that was originally on here. I forget where it was actually mounted, but probably on the manifold somewhere. But I used that one head bolt or head threaded hole. And I, th I think I like it there. It's going to be kind of tight right there. I noticed they have like a tab bent out. Um, and it's impacting the head there. I think if I pound that flat, I, I'd gain that much more. That would probably be all I need. So, but this is a Delco Remy ignition coil. Mercruiser using Chevy stuff on Ford stuff. So, I like it there. Whatever I put there. Um, if I ever find the Ford one, I could put a Ford one there, but there's plenty of gap from the water pump. Dipstick will work fine. Hose should work fine on there. Heater hose should be able to run, let's say through there. Or try to cram everything in there, but... I kind of don't want the valve cover to be hard to take off, so. But I think that's it for tonight. It's like 90, upper 90s. I don't even know what it's in here. It's probably over 100. So time to go back where the air conditioning is. Probably bringing it down to 80. Okay, so obstacle number 324. This throttle cable. I'd like to keep the Pinto throttle cable, which limits me. Um, I picked this out of the junkyard. I think it was off of one of the Fairmonts or something like that. Um, it's meant to be mounted like that on this Edelbrock. But on a Ford manifold, it would go like that, perpendicular. <clears throat> so I could modify that, cut this, bend it back down, drill a hole in it. That would work. <clears throat> the issue is the Pinto throttle cable. If you measure with the tape measure from the post here where it snaps onto to the bracket here, the jacket of the cable bolts onto it's four and a quarter inches now when i go out to the car and measure the cable extension at full extension is five and a half i don't think you'd want to put it at five and a half otherwise you might <clears throat> run the risk of it keeping the throttle open so five and a quarter five something like that um but that puts at about there, right next to the carburetor. Right to the, up to the back of it. <clears throat> so, I don't even know if a purchased throttle cable holder on the market would help me. Um, so I need it like right there. Modifying this bracket wouldn't be any benefit, I don't think. I just really need to duplicate this kind of mount. So, I'll have to come up with something. It's probably just going to be made out of angle iron for now. Angle iron and flat bar, maybe I'll do... Piece of angle iron here coming up. I don't know. We'll find something. Maybe I'll work on it tomorrow. 
when it's not so hot. Hopefully it's not so hot.